guys, and welcome back to another episode of Unbreakable Board Games. This is episode two, which is going to be partially a rant and partially a rave because we're talking about terrible board game mechanics, as well as talking about games that can make those mechanics pretty good or interesting or a way to kind of twist them around and not be such terrible mechanics. And I have a list of things to talk about, so we'll just go ahead and get into them. And we're going to go ahead and start with the first one based on the episode one, unbalancing games that are unbalanced usually involve a negative player experience and that is what has to do with terrible board game mechanics mechanics that do not make you happy every time you do them and the question is why even have it in the game if people just don't like it i mean generally even these mechanics maybe one person will like it but everybody else will hate it so i don't understand it unbalancing is one of those things and just as a simple rule of thumb just like in magic the gathering if you have a one for a one one and then somebody else has a has a uh one for a ten ten that ten ten is way better and they just happen to have it. It was luck. They drew it off the top of the deck, and there's no other reason. But yet that player is just in a way better position on the board than anybody else is just because they got lucky with it because the game isn't balanced as far as the cards are concerned. This would be probably an example of that. splat a tat tat One of the cards in this game actually has... Oh, uh, what is it called? It's like a Reaper card or a Save card, depending on the specific game title. Yeah. And this one here can basically do everything any of the other actions can do. It's basically like a wild action and so if you get it it's a deuce ex machina in the game you just simply have the ability to use it now because this game is super quick and it's meant to just be a fun quick party game i'm not gonna fault it all that much but there are a lot of games that do this a lot of games that simply just say here's a card and uh, it just does a bunch of stuff it's way better than the other cards you lose 10 gold with this card and then there's another card in the deck that just makes the player lose one gold or two gold and the general rule of thumb is losing one or two is the value of cards so it's just like why why is that in there? I get the idea as like it's a super nuke, which sounds really good in the long run, but it really makes one player completely like takes them out of the game or it makes one player uh, very, very excited, but the the rest of the players is like, okay, he just got that card, whatever. Unbalancing, as far as that goes, is no good. As well as, of course, games like, I got something around here, Outpost. Amazon is not the example, but the other Outpost game, Siberia, that one literally, it feels like when you're drawing cards for the bad guys, their cards are just so much more valuable than your cards. And because of it, it just makes the game very, very difficult. Now, they did change the rules, and you can go on BGG for Outpost Siberia if you have that game, and it makes it playable. But originally in the base game, it was literally impossible to play. It was a cooperative game you really couldn't beat it even on the easiest of modes of course the more players you had the more likely you could this one definitely uh, changes that it puts all the rules correctly as far as uh, the game goes and you can play as up to two to six players but the other one was just unbalanced and because of that it was just terrible mechanics it shouldn't be the fact that one player and or computer player has way harder than another player there are games that can fix that like i talked about in my previous unbalancing video so like the captain is dead or forbidden island where the game is progressively harder it starts off easier and the players have more room and more control up to the point where they have way less control and there's a timer that works just fine so that's one of them the next thing you guys probably probably know of is roll to move roll to move is a mechanic that is older than time Sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it works really, really terribly. Uh, an example of World of Movie games or stuff like Shoots and Ladder, Ladders, or uh, I don't know. You can think of a lot of them. The uh, the Potion game, a Quest for the Antidote game where you're rolling to move. I don't like those games because it's all based on luck. You throw the dice, you're either going to be happy, neutral, or sad. And there's too much room for negative player experience with those games. Quest for the Antidote is one of those games where every time I rolled the die, I was always upset with the outcome, regardless of how far I went, because it was just a slog. And those those kind of games do that unfortunately now it looked beautiful and whatnot so i'm not going to talk too much trash on specific games or i'll try not to who knows whatever but uh, hey, there are games that do it well like for instance uh the great alcatraz escape in this game you're rolling die and then you'll be able to move your prisoners around you're trying to escape alcatraz if you roll less than a certain number you'll be able to draw cards which in turn will allow you to do certain things and those cards are very powerful and basically will give you the difference between rolling an e and a normal number so if you roll as long as you roll seven or higher you're, you're you're gonna get to just move your dudes but if you roll six or less you get to draw a card and use the six as movement which works very well it's a really nice way to combat the problem of just complete luck when it comes to games and rolling to move has that thing there's a lot of other games as well with roll to move that you can kind of 
Uh, you can kind of change up. So another one would be instead of roll to move, but maybe just a, a rolling game in general. This is another one that does a very well, good job of it. In this game, you have different die and you can roll them and based on the number of rolled is what you get. And sometimes rolling less is gonna be better than rolling more because sometimes uh, if you wanna build something, you roll less. Or if you wanna gain, gain resources, you roll more. And so it's just depending on the turn and what die you wanna choose to roll. So when you roll, and you don't get the number you want, it's because, ah, I didn't pick the high enough die. The value was not the one I needed. Now, sometimes it's all it is die rolling, it's still die rolling, so it's based on luck. But in general, you have more control and more choice. It's not just simply toss and dice. So Unearth is a very good example of how to make a game it involves rolling or roll to move, roll to gain something. Uh, it's a good way to make it make it work. Uh, games like Risk, the original Risk and whatnot, where you're simply rolling sixes and rolling sixes, that's that's a terrible roll to combat game. I, I love the game itself. It was a game I played originally as a kid, so I always have this nostalgia in my heart. But as far as it goes, if you roll two sixes every turn, I will always lose, period, because sixes matter more than anything else. So it's so much luck, and it's always a negative experience when you have a big, massive army, and that other player has like two dudes, and they happen to roll two sixes, and you just lose your army. It makes no sense. And it can carry on for a very long period of time. Anyway, roll the move. Most of you guys already know what this is, so I'm going to drop that. Player elimination. Player elimination is another one of those mechanics that people cannot stand, and rightly so for a lot of reasons. Player elimination takes you out of the game. It literally lets you stop playing the game. Games like Werewolf do it, and games like Forsaken Force do it to the point where, okay, you're out the first five minutes, there's 20 more people in the game, and now you need to wait another two hours. It's not a really fun experience, and there is a lot of board games and 4X games that do it as well. When you're playing a 4X game that takes six hours, and you know you've lost an hour into it, but you have to play four more hours, that's also basically player elimination, and that sucks as well. Which is why a lot of times with those games, players will literally stop playing, like Axis and Allies. You know you've won, uh, it's just a matter of time and everybody else is just kind of sitting there waiting and hoping that you're going to just end and you know, end them all just please please kill me now it reminds me of that simpsons episode where bart is doing a magical wand on this frog and he's like trying to turn into a princess and he turns it into this like gurgling muck thing and it's just like please end me that's exactly what the players in the game feel like when you're dealing with player elimination forsaken forest does an okay job because it has ways to bring characters back to life it also has ways when the characters start dying the game's going to start rolling faster and faster and werewolf does a decent job as well because the more players that are left over that still can eliminate players, the faster the game's gonna go and go. But with a larger player count, I can still understand why people dislike Werewolf completely due to the fact that they're gone. They're done playing for the hour and they just have to sit there. Uh, although, in my opinion, sitting there is half the fun. So it's just gonna really depend on the player. But to avoid player elimination, you need to bring ways into making the game speed up so that way, uh, when a player dies, that's basically signifying that the game is about to end, or if not, allow players to come back in or do something different. Like, for instance, Lucidity. Lucidity is a great game because when you're eliminated, you're not. You actually turn into something else and you fight the players to kind of push them to the end, and you're still able to win the game, even though you're playing as a different character. But it still signifies that your journey on one end is done and you are now beginning a new journey, as opposed to just your journey is now over. You died. Game over. <laughs> okay, let's talk about something else. How about cannot play, literally can't play, losing turns or stopping players from taking actions. It is the most infuriating thing ever when you go to do your turn, it's the next player's turn, and they, have, they play, it's like five minute turns, and then the person plays a card on you and it says, target player loses a turn. So I just spent 30 minutes waiting for all three of you to finish your turn, and now I have to wait another 15 to 30 minutes because you played one card on me? It's so stupid. Stop making players lose turns. It's terrible. And if you're going to do it, do it right. Make it so that the players have a choice to lose their turn for a benefit or to avoid an even bigger negative. Something in which I have the choice to say, you know what, I'd rather take this enchantment that's in front of me for the rest of the game that makes me lose a currency every turn as opposed to losing my turn. Or, you know, I don't mind losing my turn because it's better than having to suffer the consequences of losing currency every turn. Or in fact, oh, I'm going to counter your spell. I'm going to stop you from playing it. No, no, I'm uh, unless you choose to lose your turn. And now I have an option to say, okay, you know, back or forth. Personally, I just do not like losing turns turns at all. I think losing turns is really, really irritating and unfun, and most games that have it are going to be take that card games that are very, very quick, in which case I don't mind it as much. Certain things like uh, Uno, where you're skipping a player and whatnot, and your turn is like coming up another five seconds. That's fine, but I'm talking about games that have five-minute turns or longer, and then they lose a turn. No! 
Stop doing that. It's stupid. No one likes that. Nobody. Not even the player playing the card because they feel bad for doing it. Pre-game construction. Pre-game construction is basically deck building, okay? In which case, like, uh, uh, where's Ivion over here? Ivion by uh, Aislinn Hall. It's an excellent, really cool little game. The first time you play it, though, you have no idea what you're doing. You have to read the rules and make a deck. You need to make sure the players know exactly what cards do, and even better, give them pre rendered decks in the rule book so you'll already have a, a deck that they can play with and they are your opponent with their deck and you're you with your deck and then they play with the rules based on the deck some example of play and then afterwards they can make deck construction because now they've got a bajillion cards to work with and this one does a really good job of giving you a ton of cards these are all the different classes and whatnot you can put together and make your own deck and uh really really enjoyable but because a lot of games unfortunately just let you jump in and say okay make a deck and then go ahead and play it and you don't realize what you need to actually put into the game you don't realize what you need to add and so it's really really bothersome because you're like okay do i put this guy with low cost because it's easier to get out or is this game more based on putting out high cost monsters because they'll be easily more easily affordable faster i don't know i've never played this game and the first game you play of a game is the most important because it'll determine whether or not you want to either buy it whether or not you want to play it again whether or not you want to buy any games from the creator of the game if you do not do this thing this very simple thing of setting up examples giving basic decks for people to build you're, you're doing it wrong i would almost go as far to even say deck building or deck uh, sorry drafting as well make sure players understand what they're drafting why they're drafting because after the third round they're just learning the game and then they realize their first two rounds they completely made terrible terrible mistakes for a basic gamer that is a no-go they are done with your game you've lost them because you basically said oh well you weren't smart enough to get it the first two rounds and so because of that you're now going to have to suffer for the rest of the game knowing you lose and the only way you're gonna actually come back in this is if you play again and most players are like no i don't want to do that now big gamers like me we'll go okay i understand the game now let's go ahead and really get into it that's that's fine most players are gonna be okay with that but if you really want to attract the biggest audience make sure you give them a full example of play give them specific ideas of what type of cards work together in the rules what cards do not work together in the rules and why or why not you want to put them together because that's going to give people the understanding before they jump into it now allow them to have a little bit of like a critical thinking and whatnot there's certain cards that will go together that you may not think about that's fine but as long as they need to they just need to know they need to understand what the game's about before they jump into it otherwise it's gonna be a really negative experience and then the last one i know it's a huge rant i hope you guys are still in it for me forcing players to act is really really irritating i don't just mean an action form where it's making a player move or making a player play a specific card i also mean play, making a player do something funny or stupid players do not like being bamboozled being bamboozled sucks. Uh, Dude and Sparkle Kitty Knights are good examples of games to make people have fun and be silly, but because they already know what they're expecting when they go into the game. They know for a fact in Sparkle Kitty, you're gonna be saying funny, silly words and making it uh, interesting and, and funny and, and making it like uh, Boo Boo Kitty or Poo Poo Noo Boo, whatever, you have to say those words. And it just comes out, the, the laughter and the fun comes out naturally in the game. Uh, and there are other games that'll just make you, I, I can't remember what it's called, Farkle or something like that, where you have to like get up and spin around or do push-ups. No, nobody wants to do a push-up during a game. I mean, there may be like the beer drinkers out there, the jock boys, like I get that, that's fine, that may be for them, but in my opinion, it's not a good mechanic, unless they're very aware of what they're getting into. If, if you're playing a 4X game and you're about to lose due to the fact that your opponent's army is coming at you, and then you play the card that says as long as you clap your hands twice and spin around in a circle, they can't attack you, it doesn't work, it's not funny, and it doesn't fit with it. Dude, or more dude, I think I do have, de I, got, I got both dudes, I got both dudes here. These work as well. These are excellent games like North Star games. All you do is say the, the game the word dude, but it's mentioned instantly. This game is about saying the word dude. Then you know what you're getting into, you know what it's gonna be like, and you understand that there's gonna be some fun involved in it, and you can choose to play or not to play. Just don't add those forcing players to do things in a the game they're not going to expect it. As long as they know that you're a party game or you're uh, even your forex game, as long as they're aware that it's gonna involve that, like make it, if, you know, if you're making a dexterity forex, you know, funny game, whatever, as long as they're aware that that's what's gonna be happening and it's set on the main principle, that's fine. But adding that little force to do things is, is, is no good otherwise. People don't like it. I've never seen people wanna do it. They always say, oh, I'm gonna just skip this card, I don't care. And in which case it just falls flat and it messes with the game a little bit. So overall, 
those were my biggest pet peeves or are my biggest pet peeves when it comes to board game mechanics that just fail for me. But there's a lot of great examples around here of games that do it well, okay? And I think I'll talk about a couple other ones that I may or may not have mentioned. I mentioned uh, Alcatraz and Ivion and Outpost. I mentioned Forsaken Force, Unearth, and Werewolf. Oh, Arkanos, another one. This is about player choice. This is kind of in terms of like being able to choose or not choose certain things, just like in Sagrada and whatnot. The first player gets the choice of seven die and picks one and puts on the board. The last player gets the choice of out of three die, right? Or one or two die. That last player is always getting a negative experience. I wish there was a way to fix it so that every player at least was decently satisfied with the choice they were making. I don't know how to fix this. This is just kind of one of those things I set aside where I was kind of hoping you in the comments below would tell me if I'm wrong or not. A lot of people like these games. I do enjoy them as well. Puzzle games are fine. I'm not very good at them. My wife loves them even more. But for me, Arkanos and Sagrada and whatnot, the very end of gameplay when you're simply rolling the die and everybody's selecting the first player super happy, the second player is okay happy, and then the last player is just like, I get the choice of these two die, and both of the die do the same thing. I can put them on the same area, or they're both not helpful to me. It's always a negative experience, and I want there to be a fix to this specific mechanic, so I think it's important. That's not to say I don't like these games. Trust me, I, I really like Arkanos, and I really like Sagrada, and there's a couple other ones, Tiny Towns. I like all those games, but there's just that one mechanic that always bugs me every time I'm last. Now, I don't know, maybe it's supposed to be there, but anyway, thank you guys for watching another Unbreakable Board Games, episode two, terrible game mechanics, or maybe not so terrible, as long as you find a way around them. Hopefully I've given you some insight, maybe if you're a designer, uh, all you guys on Patreon, maybe you just have some interesting notes, go ahead and leave them down below in the comments, let me know, and try and decide what our next episode will be about. If you can figure it out, Maybe I'll put your name down for our giveaway in the next uh, in the next live stream we do on Facebook. No giveaways on Patreon, though. There's no giveaways. I promise, Patreon. Don't worry. We're okay here. We're not breaking any terms of service. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And as always, I look forward to uh, some more Unbreakable board games with you next time. Thank you, Patreon supporters. Here's your names right now. I love you.